All right. So yes, my name is Joseph Scott. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the things that that uh, we've kind of learned from expanding the WordPress plugin recently. Um, since this format's been pretty open, my preferred way is more of a dialogue. So if you have a question, something that comes up when we're in the middle of a subject, throw your hand up. If I don't see you, scream at me. Um, if you have a question that's going to be more involved, we can save it to the end. But uh, you know, if it's on topic, let's just get it in context and so we can move on. Um, who am I? Yeah, since I need no introduction, here's my introduction. In case you haven't figured it out yet, today we're in Las Vegas. Yesterday I flew here from Salt Lake City, where I've lived for the last three and a half years. Um, prior to that, I lived in Sacramento, and prior to that, I lived in Modesto. Um, so Las Vegas kind of is like <laughs> completes the loop for me a little bit. Oh, except for the two years I lived in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, so that's me. Um, and I've worked for Automatic for the last three and a half years. Uh, most of that time has been spent kind of all over the place in WordPress.com and WordPress.org core and uh, APIs. Um, lately, though, I'm, I'm focusing basically just on Akismet, uh, hence the talk today. So when we're talking about Akismet, usually most people think, OK, I've got my WordPress blog, right? And I've written this really awesome post about how I've learned to cook <coughs> broccoli just perfect, right? And so you put it out there, and you, you create this wonderful post, and it's very well written. And somebody comes along and reads this post. And, and they look at it and go, and they read through it, and they, they kind of soak it all in and go, OK, you've written this great post about broccoli. Um, I like it so much, I'm going to leave a comment. And so he writes a comment, and, uh, and you know, reflecting on his deep analysis of this this post about cooking broccoli, and uh, so basically, you know, that gets sent to WordPress. This is awful, this yellow. Um, and then this is really where the Akismet sort of magic comes in because WordPress packages that information and sends it off to the Akismet servers. Akismet servers kind of grind through it, look at the data about it and go, hmm, does this comment look like spam? And it basically says yes or no. In this case, we're going to let this guy slide on his barbecue comment and say, yes, he's, he's OK. He's not spam. Um, in terms of the plugin context, though, this, these pieces, this part of the interaction is what the plugin manages. It intercepts comments that come into the blog, and it manages all the communication between your, your WordPress site and the Akismet servers, and it manages what to do with that result. Now, you know, you might have different policies on what you do with uh, comments that Akismet say are spam. A little bit of background, the uh, plugin is now almost five years old. Um, oh, no, wait, we're in October, right? No, it is five years old. Um, and it was started by Matt Mullenweg. Um, the name is actually from his sister. It stands for Automatic Kismet. A uh, Kismet. Um, and it's tightly associated with the WordPress.com accounts. Actually, even if you sign up for a key on a Kismet.com, you'll, you'll get a generated WordPress.com account. Um, and until recently, we supported basically all five of the last five years of, of WordPress versions. Um, we you know, wanted to make sure that anybody who wanted to use Akismet to detect spam could use it. Um, that's kind of drug some baggage along with it, but there you have it. And so recently we've said, well, we need to be a little bit more realistic about this to, to help development move along and say, OK, we're going to draw a line in the sand and start saying, oh, you need to actually be using something that was released in the last couple of years uh, to start with. Um, and honestly, in the future, we'll probably make WordPress 3.0 as kind of the dividing line there uh, for stuff. The organization of the plugin, originally, it was just these three files. That was it. Um, as a result, the, the, and it didn't start out this big. Um, the akismet.php file that does all the work, eventually just, it, you know, it had everything. You know, if you needed to so add something to the akismet plugin, you threw it into this one file, and it became this big giant file. That's all it was. Uh, and it did everything under the sun. Uh, 
the, you know, as a result, it made finding things a little bit tricky. Um, because, okay, I need to find the comment hook interaction. Well, I know it's in this file somewhere. So code organization with the newer version uh, that's coming out soon, we broke, start breaking things up into more logical pieces. Uh, th this helped quite a bit. Uh, the biggest thing is it's easy to figure out where stuff is at. Uh, there's actually a widget. Um, I don't know how many people have used it, but the little widget you can put in your sidebar that says here's how many uh, comments uh, Akismet has processed uh, to protect your site. Um, originally, that was all in akismet.php, uh, which meant if you wanted to have that one little widget on your site, it had to load the whole thing. Uh, another benefit to moving all this stuff out was it was easier to test. Um, if we made a change in the widget code uh, and, ju and just the file that contained that, we, didn't, we don't need to rerun all the tests for the whole plugin. We just need to rerun the tests that deal with that widget. Uh, another issue is uh, you know, just fixing the problems. If there is a bug, you know, somebody says, oh, the widget's not doing X, and I expected it to. It's no more hunting through this gargantuan file anymore. We just go to the widget file and say, OK, the, all the widget code's in here. Let's figure it out. And stuff does break. Um, and so when it does, it doesn't you know, crash the whole thing, everything that's related to a kismet. In this case, if the little sidebar widget had a fatal error for some reason, for instance, it wouldn't stop uh, your site from, from processing comments through a kismet and such. So limiting the scope of breakage is really helpful. Um, less code to load. This is another big thing. Um, because since it was all in one file, you had to run that for everything, no matter what you were using it for. Um, and I already pointed out the sidebar would suck up the whole thing. Here's another thing that people don't necessarily associate, but there's performance benefits on the client side too. Uh, Akismet uh, would inject uh, CSS and JavaScript and other pieces. Um, in, this in our case, because it's, this is mostly for the admin interface, it wasn't really uh, all your visitors. But again, the browser didn't even have a chance to cache that sort of stuff because it was just being injected as part of the page. Same with the JavaScript. Um, and this has another side effect other than just caching because of the way browsers interact with inline, inline uh, CSS and JavaScript. They would stop processing the rest of the page until that JavaScript had been processed. Uh, so being able to break that out allows for a whole new realm of possibilities as far as performance increase. So another aspect of the plugin, like I said, this has been around for five years now. Um, I had looked at the Akismet plugin over time, but it wasn't until I was part of the, the team focusing on Akismet that I actually spent time, significant amount of time with it. Um, and there was just a lot of stuff that over the years hadn't been uh, taken care of very well. Um, so we looked at all these little things that uh, needed to be modernized. Uh, one, for instance, was just new features that come in. Uh, an example of this, this is a bit contrived, but it demonstrates the principle, is that before we had scheduled tasks, the, the pseudo cron stuff in WordPress, um, it, it would just run stuff synchronously. So for instance, if we needed to delete old spam comments um, prior to being able to schedule it, it would just say, OK, we're going to run it now. Nothing you, know, nothing you can do about it. Um, and we would, so we'd have all these little checks in there to figure out whether or not we had to run it synchronously or whether we could schedule it for some, uh, some point later. Uh, Another aspect that comes into play if you've done a lot of uh, WordPress 3 stuff recently is translation. Uh, there were several functions that were deprecated for that. Um, this gets a little more interesting because it gets to be a pain to just do the simple if-else if checks because you might be using that uh, translation function several times and it's kind of a pain to put conditionals around every single case. Uh, so I ended up uh, employing just variable function names and detecting which ones were available. Uh, we default to the oldest ones that we knew worked um, that were deprecated in current versions and if the new version was available we'd make use of that. 
another aspect is escaping, basically the same exact technique where we'd say, look, this is the old one we know works, but if the new one's available, let's use that. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because these look like contrived examples, and they are. I mean, they're out of the plugin, but they're, there's some other aspects to this that are important because um, you might end up with performance impacts on this. So you may have come up with a way to do something or using an old way to do something that has been improved in WordPress. And if you're not taking advantage of that new way, you know, there's all sorts of performance things that could come into play. Uh, so these are, you know, kind of non-exciting examples, but they could have significant, significant impact. Um, another thing, actually, that has bothered us quite a bit was the way we did HTTP requests sending the data out from your WordPress site to the Akismet servers. Um, it's just a simple HTTP post call. It's nothing exotic. Um, but because we supported versions that were so ancient, um, this way predates the HTTP class. Um, so what we did was we called FSOC open. We basically did a direct open up the port, hand write the, P, the HTTP headers, send it off, process the HTTP. You know, it was, it's more work um, than it really should be. Uh, but again, since we were supporting all these old versions, you kind of didn't have a whole lot of choice. Uh, so what we, what we did is say, okay, well, if we do have this new capability, let's use that instead. Um, notifying others. This was kind of embarrassing, actually. Um, one of the things Akismet does is after 15 days, uh, it will go through and delete comments that are marked as spam that are older than 15 days. And, uh, and while I generally don't recommend uh, direct database queries in a plugin, if you can help it, if you can't, you kind of have to go that route. Um, in this case, we didn't have a WordPress function that we could say, go delete comments that are older than 15 days. So we uh, wrote this query, and uh, the Vault Press guys came to us and said, hey, we're having this issue with blogs that have a Kismet installed. Um, which was a few of them, you know. Uh, and what was happening was, uh, the way VaultPress works is it looks at all the actions and activity that goes on and will sync it as they occur. Um, and if there's an action that's fired, it hooks into that. Um, otherwise, it has to go and, and keep track of what's going on in the database, which is way more work. So originally, we actually didn't have this whole do action. We just said, oh, it's time to delete comments that are older than 15 days old and did it. Um, so we adjusted how that was done and added the action. Um, this was basically, I mean, it was Vault Press that brought this to our attention, but this is a factor of playing nice with others. Um, because if you're going to do things like delete content, uh, it's really nice to do things like tell them you're going to delete the content. Um, so that's what that do action does. So if there was another plugin, for instance, in this case Vault Press, that was interested to know when comments got deleted. This was a, the WordPress, the proper WordPress way to tell. So WordPress 2.5, um, I'm going to say these things. Don't hold them as being perfect yet. Uh, 2.5 is a big improvement. Um, we've cleaned up a lot of stuff. There's still a lot of things that we're going to continue to clean up. Um, so I'm going to highlight some of these things, but uh, keep in mind that there's more to come. One feature we added is history logging. Um, we had a challenge where people would run several anti-spam comment or anti-comment anti spam plugins at the same time, and then they would get something that would get marked as spam and contact us going, I don't know why this person got marked as spam. Why did Akismet do this? And nine times out of 10, it turns out it wasn't actually Akismet that was doing it, it was some other plugin. So history logging, what we're doing is actually modifying the comment UI so that we can say what Akismet did with this comment. Um, that's a little bit hard, so we should be, yeah. So it basically says cleared by Akismet. It says 
this is legit, a kismet processed this, and this is what we think about it. Excuse me. On the spam side, you get a similar sort of thing, um, but in this case, it says that a kismet flagged it as spam. Um, this is hopefully going to be helpful all the way around. It's helpful for the user because they get a little bit more information about what actually happened instead of just, you know, willy-nilly, yes, I think Akismet did this or maybe something else did. We don't know. Um, it's also helpful on our side because then we can point users to this if, if they get confused about what may or may not be interacting with comments on their site. Uh, if you click on this link, it takes you to the edit page, or I'm sorry, the edit comment screen. And we've added a new comment history box underneath the, the rest of that. Um, and basically, this just gives you a log of, let's see, the next screen gives a little example here. So originally, it says, you ship this off to Akismet. Akismet thought it was spam. The admin user came along and reported it as not spam. This is obviously a contrived example. But basically, I took the admin user and said, not spam, spam, not spam, not spam. Um, back and forth, just to get a little bit of length in the comment history here. Um, this is another thing where we get people with uh, lots of users on a site. And they might report suspicious activity or activity they didn't expect. Um, and they might blame it on a plugin. This at least gives us a, a possibility of going back and say, OK, well, let's look at the history and figure out actually who did what to this comment. Um, in this case, it's all the admin user. But obviously, if it was a separate user that marked it as spam or not spam, that would get recorded accordingly. Uh, another feature that we've talked about actually for quite a while, um, and it's not in its final state, but it's so much better than what we had before that we think it's worthy of, of including in the next version. Um, many of you have probably seen this screen from the configuration page on Akismet. Um, this was added because originally, uh, like I said, it takes all of your comment information ships it off to Akismet so that it can figure out if it's spam or not and send you a response back. In the rare case that you can't reach the Akismet servers for some reason, um, there was no sort of feedback to the user. So this page was originally added so that we could tell the user, hey, we're not a, you're not able to reach Akismet.com. Talk to your host or whatever. So what we, and, and that's good. This gave more feedback to the user. But it, it kind of left them in this limbo state, right? Where the Akismet plugin, by default, will say, if I can't reach akismet.com for processing, put all the comments in the moderation queue, because I don't know what to do with them. Um, this is great, but if you get a whole bunch of spam during that time, it's not really that fun to have to go through and then mark all the stuff as spam, or, to, or click the retry button randomly and not know whether or not it's going to do anything for you. So, what happens now in the new version is that if we detect that uh, a processing event error occurred, so we tried to send data off to Akismet and it failed, it will schedule a job in 20 minutes to try again. And it will just basically continue to do that every 20 minutes or so until it starts getting valid responses back. This way, if for some reason uh, in the middle of the night, for instance, uh, you know, your host has unplugged the wrong network cable and you can't reach akismet.com anymore, uh, your site will basically recover automatically. When they plug that cable back in and all the connectivity is restored, your site will just automatically start retrying again. <coughs> and all those comments that got missed before will get processed again. And basically, you know, if it happens over an hour window at 3 in the morning and you're asleep the whole time, it'll just all work and you won't have to worry about it. Uh, which, you know, overall for Akismet is the end goal, right? Nobody wants to look at spam by definition. Um, so if anything we can do to make that experience better is something we're going to aim for. I talked a little bit about the HTTP stuff. The big problem we had with this, it, it works. And it even works with current versions just fine, um, except for people who have proxy servers. If your server is sitting behind uh, a network situation where it has to communicate to a proxy server in order to reach the outside world, 
the raw socket code that we had didn't support proxy servers. So we had two choices. We could modify it to support proxy servers, which is what we end up having to tell people currently when they say, oh, I have a proxy server and I can't reach it. And it says Akismet's down. Um, it's not. You just can't get through your proxy server. Um, they would have to basically edit the plugin, which really sucks. Uh, because the next update, then they have to edit it again. Um, we chose not to write our own proxy support because the current uh, HTTP class in WordPress has built-in support for it. Uh, so if you've already done this to set up your proxy in wp-config, now Akismet will just use that and it will all work. Um, that's another example of where even though the original stuff that you wrote five years ago still technically works, WordPress is continuing to improve so much in every version that you have to kind of keep up with all this stuff to go, oh, look, I can provide a much better user experience if I use the current technology and WordPress releases instead of using this old stuff, um, even though technically it still works. It's just not as good an experience. If you want to try this out, um, the, it's in the plugins directory, so this is a subversion uh, URL for the developer development version of Akismet. Um, if you do try it out, whoops, if you do try it out, I ask that um, you send any feedback as tickets uh, and mark it as a component of Akismet. Um, we watch all those tickets now very closely, so if you file something it says, oh, I found a bug, or oh, you could do this better, whatever. Um, file it as a ticket for that. You could always bug me personally too, but ticket, it'll probably end up in a ticket anyway. So if you're developing a theme or a plugin, and how do you discover these sorts of issues, right? Because that's one of the things that's a challenge is um, there's now so many people working on WordPress that it's really, really hard to keep up with everything. Um, you know, if I were to hazard a guess, there's probably only a handful of people who know the entire code base well enough to give like salient answers to questions on almost any piece. Um, so as a result, you really need to start leveraging some of the tools that are available to let you know what's going on. The first one, and I have to confess, I didn't do this nearly as much as I should. Um, I've, I've since repented, and now I've converted, converted to WP Debug. Basically, if you do development work for WordPress, you've got to turn it on. Um, WordPress, because people usually just like launch it and poof, it's in production, um, it tries really hard to not expose horrendous errors or warnings or notices or other things because in production that's really annoying. Nobody wants to have people come to their site and see 4,000 lines of PHP warnings. Um, but if you're a developer, those 4,000 lines of PHP warnings are probably a clue that you're doing something bad or wrong or at the very minimum could be doing it better. Uh, so what WP, D, WP Debug does is it basically says, okay, let's stop hiding this. So when you go to a page, you're going to get any PHP warnings, uh, any other notices that WordPress throws out, uh, you're going to get that in the page. Um, there's a really handy plugin that actually I think was mentioned earlier today. Yeah, Pete mentioned it. It was the Log Deprecated Notices plugin um, by Andrew Nason. This is really handy. What you end up with is um, custom post type. So this looks familiar. Um, and it says, OK, here's the deprecated. It logs all the deprecated calls. It's named. It does what it sounds like. Uh, you get a list of all the calls, function calls, that you're using in a plugin or a theme that WordPress has marked as deprecated. And then it says, here's your list of alternatives. Um, and it gives you information on what version it was deprecated in, which is also really handy because it may have only been deprecated like one release ago. And you, know, you may decide, OK, I'm not ready to make that conversion yet. Um, 
It also gives you a count, which is also really handy because sometimes you'll be amazed how many times these functions are abused over and over and over again. Um, so I have one more thing that we're doing with Akismet. How many frames per second does that camera do? Uh, 30. 30 frames per second. OK. Well, somebody will do the math. This should only show up for a half second. This isn't actually launched yet, but I wanted we're doing a lot on the Akismet side. We have four people now on the Akismet team. Um, it used to be about one and a half people. <laughs> um, and so Akismet is kind of getting revitalized with this team. We have uh, one person in the UK, one person in North Carolina, uh, myself in Salt Lake City, and one in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, if you've been to akismet.com, you know it probably hasn't changed three or four years. So it's been a while, right? Everybody remembers the day before spam, that little logo thing. Yes, it's still up there. Um, but we hired a really great designer, Dave Martin. Um, he was living in Sydney at the time, but now he lives in North Carolina. Um, and we've been spending a lot of time on a new design. It's not launched yet. But I figured since I was spending all this time talking about a kismet, that it might be fun to take a quick look. Oh, wait, it's already got the cameras out. Uh, so we're getting ready to launch this soon. I hate, I hate giving dates for things that are going to be released soon, but it will be soon-ish. And that was the sneak peek. Um, the new a kismet design. Um, because one of the things we've found is that um, because Akismet's kind of in a unique situation, it ships with WordPress core, um, which for a plugin is really unique. Um, a lot of people just don't, they kind of act, turn it on and then don't think about it. Um, and we haven't done as good a job as we could have about informing people about how Akismet works, what sort of options are available with Akismet. Um, this is part of the reason why we now have a whole team around the Kismet instead of basically one person, um, so that we could do these types of things. So that was the sneak peek at the new design um, that, that was uh, just about ready to launch. I'm not going to, you know, I mean, it should be soon-ish. Uh, <laughs> but one of the th reasons we're doing all that and putting effort into it is because we want to uh, help clarify. Um, I've, one of the things I've been doing is a Kismet support also. Um, and it's just clear that we have not communicated as well as we could have about what a Kismet does, why it does it, um, and, and how we're going to make that better in the future. Um, I actually whizzed through this really fast, so I don't know if I spoke too soon. Um, but if you have questions that I can answer, uh, and if you have questions I can't answer, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> but that is my rapid fire, I guess, walkthrough of lessons that, that we've done with the Akismet plugin as late. And there'll probably be more. But that's what I've encountered so far. And hopefully, you've learned a little bit from that. Can you do that one tenth of a second? It wasn't one tenth of a second. I actually said it in Keynote for 0.5 seconds. OK. <laughs> Can we do it again? Well, no, then it would be one second. Everybody who saw before and close your eyes. Yeah, if you blinked, how fast does it blink? I don't know. I could, I blinked. I blink. <laughs> there's, there's probably one or two frames on the camera that caught it. Uh, so if you have questions, yeah, Todd. And that's my contact information if you want to abuse me about this later. They pretty much go hand in hand. Um, the one person who was basically doing it full time, that's one of the reasons why the plugin didn't get a whole lot of love, because he had so many other things to do on his plate that you know, the plugin worked, right? I mean, it didn't cause, you know, it wasn't breaking things. But it was one of those things where it's like, it worked, but that's kind of a really lame way to like, be excited about your plugin, right? Oh, my plugin is so awesome, it works. It works and nobody wants it. 
nobody gets excited about that, right? Uh, ooh, it works. Yeah, well, I'd kind of be disappointed if it didn't, you know. What's that? Well, yes, yeah. if, you, if you've never written a plugin before, the first time you get Hello Dolly to work, you go, ah, yes, it works. Um, but yeah, once you get into this and you've got like, you know, a thousand lines of code or something and you go, oh, it works. Well, that's, you know, yeah. So it's one of those things where we just uh, really wanted to raise the bar and make a Kismet plugin something that was a model of not only it works, um, but that it works well, it uses modern features, it performs well, it does all the things that you would expect a top-notch plugin to do. Um, and so that's why it's getting more time and resources. Uh, it's been a challenge for me personally because I had my fingers in like everything and now it's, Matt says, okay, you only keep your fingers in a kismet. Um, so it's been a big change for me personally. That is, that was one of my questions. Um, you know, I, that's why we've drawn a line in the, sign, in the sand, basically, and said, okay, we're going to only support, you know, 2.9 and up or something. Um, and probably, you know, when we get to 3.1, say 3.0 and up. Um, I think in part because of the nature of a kismet. Uh, you may have done other things to mitigate old issues in your WordPress install, but you're still going to get comment spam. Um, yeah, so I th I th it was just one of those things where we really wanted everybody who could potentially end up getting comment spam to be protected if they'd done other things to, that for some reason they thought justified not updating WordPress. Um, I certainly hope nobody has ever looked at that and said this is a good reason for not updating. Because um, that would be the opposite of, <laughs> of what we want. I should mention also, just real quick, um, Akismet is an open API. So there is uh, no reason that, that this has to be tied to WordPress. But WordPress is by far and large our, our single biggest um, user, if you want to put it that way, as a, as a platform. Yeah? Uh, yeah, well, there we go. Um, the, if you go to uh, akismet.com and click on development uh, right now, at least until the new version's out, uh, then there's a link at, in the first paragraph to the API documentation. Actually, you know what I'd like. Um, for you know, not knowing how, how your backend works, how, how it actually checks to see what is considered spam and what is, and uh, is, it, is it possible to say, okay, well, these aren't exactly comments, these are more posts that we're doing, or, or how is it actually? That's all right. So, so I think I'll answer that in kind of two ways. One, how does a Kismet know what's spam and what's not spam? Um, so my first answer is technically I don't know. Uh, the, the second answer is it uses a combination of things. So there is no one thing, for instance, that's going to um, completely snowball a, a comment. Um, in part because a kismet needs to be able to adapt to all those things, and spammers have a tremendous amount of resources to uh, try and combat that. Um, the second question really was, can it be adapted to do other things than just strictly comments? Um, the simple answer is yes. The more complex answer is it depends on what that is. Because Akismet uses, a, going back to the first part, because Akismet uses a combination of things, it really does need that sort of rich data set about whatever it is that it's anal uh, analyzing uh, to really make a reasonable answer. Um, so for instance, we've talked a lot about um, logins, right? Uh, for, or signups for uh, MU sites, for instance. Um, MS, sites. MS, sorry. Multi-site. Um, I have just stared at this for a long time. Um, because people would like to, to be able to do that, uh, this, to say, OK, somebody just signed up. Run it through a Kismet and see if it's a spammer or not. Um, 
at the point of sign up there's or, or registration whatever login there's just not enough information for Akismet to really make a good uh, determination um, somebody I can't remember who it was at dinner last night actually suggested that maybe we could do some post analysis after the fact um, and say hey this person who signed up three days ago they've done this this and this and we think that categorizes them as a spammer um, so it's possible and we are we are already doing analysis on other things that aren't WordPress comments um, so it's not only is it possible it's already being done but within the scope of things that have a rich data set with them so that we can do the type of analysis that we you know that we've designed it for yeah do I work on any other plugins uh, so yeah, I've written, um, I gotta think about this now, what plugins did I write? Uh, push press, um, I wrote that one. Um, actually the Akismet team, uh, the con oh, another sneak peek here, this isn't released yet, so don't tell anybody. Uh, don't tweet this. Um, <laughs> so the Akismet team recently worked on the uh, Grunion contact form, which is the, which was a contact form, kind of the official automatic contact form. Um, it's one we use on WordPress.com, for instance. Uh, we had some feedback from people who were like, you know, one of the problems is it runs it through Akismet, the contact form submissions, which is great, but uh, there's no way with like comments to. Uh, correct Akismet if it made a mistake. Um, so we spent a whole bunch of time and we basically just blew the doors off this this contact form plugin. Um, it is not only so much better in how it deals with Akismet, but just we added a ton of new features to it. Um, kind of the team thing now at Automatic is that it's not just that we would necessarily work on only Akismet, but that projects we do would be team focused. Um, man, what other plugins? Seems like I've, oh, oh, the RSS Cloud. There are some other plugins I wrote. I hate to say this, but I'd have to look up my profile. <laughs> Do you have an example of what kind of conflict you're running into? So we distribute a plugin called GeoPosty, and what we do is we hit uh, you know, queries in our API, and we essentially send all the IP data down and cache it on the user so that they're not hitting our server every right. time that user goes around. That conflicts with Super Hacker, uh, which, is, which is an issue. Another instance is uh, with that same plugin, uh, Slideshow. Right. So it's, it's, it's not meant to be like, what is the meaning of life question? <laughs> so I, I, you know what, I'll break this one down into kind of two as well, because uh, the general question is um, how to play nice with other plugins. Um, there's a lot of, you know, some of this just boils down to uh, unique options, um, good code encapsulation, use a class. That's another thing that Akismet is weak on right now, quite honestly. It's just a bunch of functions. Um, they're uniquely named and you know, prefixed with Akismet, but really they could be better encapsulated. Um, so there's kind of that list of things. And unfo you're, unfortunately, you're right. You can't control other plugins. Um, and we actually spend a reasonable amount of time as far as across automatic when we run into those contacting plugin authors saying, can you please fix this? You know, to the point where it's like, here's a patch, please commit this. Um, or give me commit privs and I'll fix it myself. Uh, you know, we're fine with that sort of stuff. Five minutes? Oh. 
10 minutes. OK. Well, we'll just keep going until you haul me out of here. Um, so, so yeah, you know, we've taken to, to basically contacting plugin authors and saying, you know, we're running into this issue, that issue. Actually, Vault Press is, um, because of the, what it does, um, it runs into that probably more often than anybody else. Um, and it's, it's made quite a big effort to contact plugin developers and say, look, we're running into XYZ, please fix it. Um, for the most part, that works. Uh, the second question was about Supercache. And Supercache is kind of unique in this regard because of what it does. Again, it, you know, for those not familiar, basically it caches the rendered HTML output. So instead of really, you don't get a chance to do PHP processing. Um, Almost always the answer you end up having to do if you really want to play nice with, with Supercache is um, doing some sort of async thing, like an image load that you process or something on the page, some sort of buglet. Thank you. Does that answer? OK. Yeah? How is Vault, Vault Press doing its uh, release cycle? Because I signed up for Vault probably even months to a year ago. So um, how are they doing the release of that? So Vault Press on a completely other to uh, different topic. Um, Vault Press is essentially closed beta. Um, so you sign up and say, I'm interested. And that goes into our database. And I think currently we're doing something on the order of 30 invites a day. So we pull 30 names from the list of people who said they're interested and send them invites. So that's currently how it works. Um, yeah, you know, find find some way to uh, get somebody's attention and see if you can get bumped on the list or something. There. Um, the intention is to get enough feedback and make sure that it's solid enough so that when we open it up and anybody can sign up and use it instantly, that we're very, very confident that, you know, 99% of the common issues are all solved. Um, vault press. Um, VaultPress is actually an amazing piece of work. The guy, the lead on that team has done um, just a tremendous amount of work and some really, really clever stuff to make it do what it does. Uh, it's a very impressive piece of technology. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any, oh, yeah. So the question was about the different accounts on Akismet. Um, there's free version and paid versions. Um, currently, basically, the line is uh, free versions are for personal sites. Um, so basically, if you're a business or some, you know, that's your, you know, your business site, then our terms are basically you sign up for a paid account. Um, that's something else that we, that's part of that piece of where we haven't really communicated as well as we should have. Um, and so the new site, that's part of our intention is to make it easier. So when somebody comes to the site, instead of leaving with the question of, I have no idea what account to sign up for, um, hopefully we have you know, good, good copywriting and other stuff that just says, this account for this, this account for this, this account for this. Um, basically, the line is for, for free and personal versus business and you know paid accounts. That's the line. Yeah. Uh, what kind of issue do you guys see? I'm sorry, what? what? How many requests a day do you guys get? That's a good question. Somebody have a kismet.com pulled up? I've got something. OK. Uh, let's see. Today, so far, we've done 23 million. What? Uh, Comment processing. Um, I haven't looked at the graphs recently to tell you whether or not that's average or not, to be quite honest, but tens of millions is the norm. Yeah? Does that indicate um, spam pattern, or is that just accrued? It's just a, well, so this is, so on akismet.com, we list both the grand total and the daily total. We, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do definitely get spikes. Um, they're not as prevalent as they used to be. Because now, it, because two factors. One, WordPress is so popular, um, and Akismet is so closely associated with WordPress, that Akismet has grown hugely. So in order to register a spike of significant factor is actually a lot more work than it used to be. So we do see spikes, but in as far as the statistical totals, as far as processing, they don't really register as that exciting anymore. So is that not the valuable information to you? Oh no, for us it's valuable because it helps us determine thing, you know, things that are more likely to spam. I'm just saying on the you know the public stats that we put out. It's really hard to, to see a spike and, and correlate it to a direct issue because for one particular type of attack to be big enough to generate a significant spike by itself would have to be really, 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 really big. And it, it's hard to do that now. Not impossible, and I'm sure somebody now is going to challenge, you know, I'll show you how. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. When you say over and over and over, are you saying on separate sites? I got started on my personal site and then, you know, multiple business sites and other stuff. I've just continued to use it um, partly out of convenience, but I don't know if it's. So. It's getting accurate spam marketing. All of, all of those sites are associated with the one key, and Akismet knows that. Um, I think in most cases, and this is one of those things that we as a team have talked kind of back and forth on, you know, should we just come out with a recommendation on how to do this? Um, and we haven't really come to a firm conclusion yet, but my personal inkling is that um, signing up for separate keys probably makes that better. Um, because in part, it's less of an akismet issue than it is, um, management issues, right? If if you have a client and the keys associated with well, no, you. These are things I own. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean it doesn't hurt anything. And it doesn't necessarily improve anything. That answer I know that that's kind of a probably a wishy washy answer, but all right. Well if we don't have any other questions we'll Wrap it up for the last session. Thank you.